during the last two weeks, you learned about the fundamentals of nuclear energy and the materials involved. My name is Victor Sanchez, and today we will have a look at the most common types of nuclear reactors, the light water reactor. Let's discuss the main elements needed in a nuclear power plant. Of course, we need fuel consisting of fissile material in order to generate nuclear heat. As a result, we need a coolant to transport the heat away from the reactor core. In light water reactors, regular water is used for this purpose. The water does not only serve as a coolant, so it also acts as a neutron moderator, which slows the fission neutrons down to lower energies. Finally, the nuclear chain reaction needs to be controlled. In light water reactors, control rods are one of the ways to achieve this. In a coal fire power plant, the heat produced from chemical energy is used to directly produce steam, which drives a turbine. The power conversion system of light water reactors is very similar to this, with few differences. For example, some types of nuclear reactors use additional water loops and a steam generator, as can be seen in the image on the right. The boiling water reactor is very similar to a fossil fuel power plant. The fission heat produces steams directly in the reactor core. The steams passes the separators, dryers, and then reach the turbine, where it expands. The enthalpy at the outlet of the core can be simply calculated by adding the inlet enthalpy and the in energy added to the coolant to reach saturation and the latent heat of evaporation. The core power can be estimated by multiplying the core mass flow rate with the latent heat of evaporation. The boiling water reactor is a direct cycle circuit consisting of steam lines that connects the reactor pressure vessel to the turbine. The high pressure steam expands in the turbine and drives the generator to produce electricity. The condenser collects the water after it passes through the turbine. The water is pumped back to the reactor vessel by the feed water pump. Meanwhile, the water is heated to ensure that the inlet temperature is constant. In a pressurized water reactor, the single phase coolant enters the core with a certain temperature and under high pressure. The enthalpy at the core outlet is predicted by integrating the coolant heat capacity from its inlet temperature to its outlet temperature. The core power is estimated by multiplying the mass flow rate, the average heat capacity, and the temperature increase of the coolant along the core. A pressurized water reactor consists of a primary and secondary circuit connected by the steam generator. There, the generated heat is transferred to the secondary circuit, where steam is produced at a lower pressure. The dry steam leaves the steam generator and reaches the turbine. From this point, the pressurized water reactors and the boiling water reactors are essentially the same. In this figure, you can see an entire pressurized water reactor plant with everything from the reactor building, the turbine hall, the control room, the emergency power supply building, the chimney, etc. It's a really complex system consisting of mechanical, electrical, chemical, IC components. Finally, you see a real nuclear power plant. As example, the Biblis nuclear power plant in Germany. You see there the arrangement consisting of two blocks with a spherical containment, the two cooling towers, and so on. Thank you so much for your interest and it would be very great to meet you again in the next video where I will present to you the fundamentals of reactor safety.